Hey everybody, it's Laurie from Gables on the Go. I'm here with Janelle. Hi y'all. <laughs> and we are doing a special little event today called Coral Fragging. You guys want to join? Let's go join. frag. Yeah. Let's Tell go us about frag. coral fragging. What is coral fragging? Um, well, basically you cut coral that is grown um, in man-made conditions. You cut the coral into little bitty pieces and you glue them on little, what would you call those? Those were ceramic plugs. Plugs. Ceramic plugs. That's plugs. it. Plugs. And you glue them on there so that they can go and replant them, let them grow in the ocean, and then replant them on the reef yeah. to make more coral. And today we were working on what was the coral? Not boulder. Boulder coral. Boulder coral. And it's fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. The little drill. What's that drill called? Bandsaw? The bandsaw? The bandsaw. With Not the diamond, yep. diamond, diamond blade. Diamond yeah. blade, yeah. We're learning all kinds of new vocabulary yes. words today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go check it out. Let's go. Are you going to do that, honey? I'm fragging. What are you fragging? I'm fragging coral. <laughs> going to cut the coral. Going to cut the coral. Cut the coral into little pieces. Little fragments. Yeah, mm -hmm. fragments. We're taking our broodstock coral off of here, and what we're going to do from there is cut it up and make some fragments out of it. So first we have to take it off the card, and there it cracks right off. So this is Orbicella fabulata. The genotype is number 93, and it's going to be, ooh, he's very unhappy. See that sliming? That means he's very unhappy, so we're going to put him in the water. Oh my gosh. And the water has tags in it already that let us know it's Orbicella fabulata, genotype 93. So it doesn't get mixed up. We're gonna let them sit for a minute, then we're gonna cut them up. Very cool. <laughs> we're gonna cool. slime some more. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, is take this coral piece, we're gonna cut out the, uh, the center section of it, which mm -hmm. will be the brood stock for future corals. Uh -huh. And then the remaining part of it, we're gonna cut into about quarter inch strips. Mm -hmm. And that will be the new growth that we will. Uh, put out on the reef that will grow into larger sections. Gotcha. Okay. So your first thing here will be to cut out that center section and you're going to try to cut something that's going to look like this out of the center of it. Okay. All right. I can do that. I think. And you want it perfectly round. I'm not following this. I'm not following this right here. Right? All right. I got a bunch of spit from the drill on them. It's not spit, it's, it's mucus. mucus. Yeah, I got mucus on my it's, glasses. It's coral mucus. I have, a, I have been mucused. I've been attacked. All right. So we work with we work with two organizations. The one we're working with right now is called Reef Renewal USA. Uh, the, the president is Mike Echeverria, and we try to take people out to the nurseries as often as possible. Right now we're set up to go every third Saturday of the month. Um, the trips are $99, but half of that money goes back to the restoration program. So we make 40 bucks to cover our staff and fuel costs for the day. And we're going to want to replant it, we're going to want it to grow. So we're going to take this, we don't have to go through the whole coral, all we have to do is do this and it'll break. Okay. And we'll take. We would like them to be obviously longer than this when we when we frag them. And then what we're doing with reef renewal now. This is a lot of work to keep clean. Okay. And you can only take divers so often. And we're going to clean them. 
and volunteers, you know, you can only do it so often and okay. in the winter it's not fun. So what, what they came up with with Reef Renewal, and we're using a, a cotton rope which will eventually dissolve, they're calling these burns, vertical nurseries. And so instead of doing a tree, okay. we'll take these, we'll take it a, a fist apart, we'll twist the rope open, we'll take the frag piece that we cut, we'll put it in here, it'll twist it back, and after about five or six months, the coral will grow over the rope. Okay. We'll put about 25 pieces on the, on, the, on the vern, and then we can detach this from the float and the anchor and take the whole thing and plant it on the reef. And we can plant 25 corals rather than singles at a time. Okay. So it gives us a greater flexibility. We also have, Mike's been able to, with the sanctuary people, I never thought we would ever have this. We have actually 40 of these in the sanctuary off of Mooring Ball 23. Fantastic. So we can actually take it right there where the coral grows, mm -hmm. same water, less stress, That's true. detach it, bring it right to the reef. Hmm. And when we use cotton rope, the cotton, we can't do it on polyprope okay. because polyprope doesn't dissolve okay. and the sanctuary won't let us put polyprope in the sanctuary. Okay. But we can put the cotton rope because the cotton rope after eight, six or eight months will dissolve. We weren't sure the cotton rope at first when we first started using it, but we're amazed at how it's holding up. Okay. So we're excited about the cotton rope because it makes it easier. So instead of taking individual pieces of coral and trying to attach them, I have them already all growing over this, mm -hmm. I can detach it, now I can set this down and I can attach this on the reef. There's been a lot of coral planting done, both elkhorn and staghorn, by CRF and by Moat. Okay. And you can see how some of it, like we'll plant it, when we get it, when we get it out there, sometimes it's about this thick. There's coral now, there's elkhorn or staghorn that's now this big around that's grown out there. Now, some of the places where we have planted, um, we tried to tell CRF they were planting too shallow, and they did. And two, two summers ago, the water at Lou Key was 90 degrees, 13 feet down. Not good for the coral. We do know that maybe as much as 20% of the stuff we're going to plant is going to die. But the more we plant, the greater the chance we have to save the reefs. Yes. And so, like I said, I'm trying to get your grandchildren or great-grandchildren to be able to see the reefs the way we used to see them. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk more about how... Okay, skinning? we'll talk about the skinning with the yes. brain corals. Yes. So, brain, so um, branching corals, staghorn and elkhorn, mm -hmm. are habitat builders. So they build the habitats for fish to swim in and live and everything else. But the brain corals and the star corals are the reef builders. They build the barrier reefs and the structures. Okay. And that's why they're so important. And that's also, they grow very slowly. So a couple years ago, one of the scientists who had been working on this for years accidentally broke a piece of coral and he was mad at himself and he let it sit and he came back and it had grown. And so they got the idea to start cutting them, making them smaller and smaller to eventually they now make them that when size. Did that start about? about six or seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and so now you cut them to where we have really small pieces, mm -hmm. and then they started playing with it. So they would get the same genotype, mm -hmm. and they would they would actually in the old days they would make an old coral head or find an old coral head with nothing on it, mm -hmm. real holes in it, mm -hmm. put an epoxy in, and then put once it had overgrown the plug, they would put the same genotypes around it and it would grow over it itself. Okay. And so within about two to three years, you would have now a coral head that's this big that in the wild, under normal circumstances, takes 50 years to grow. Because people would ask us, because I was working at Moat, and mm -hmm. people would ask us, what are you putting in the water to make the coral grow faster? Well, we can't put anything in the water. And in fact, when we started this a long time ago, we used to have to get a veterinarian to come and inspect the corals to make sure we weren't putting anything in there that any, had any disease. Because don't, we don't want any disease. We don't want any more disease than we have out there. And so, it, they're very particular. That's why when we were able to get um, trees if the permits to put trees in the actual sanctuary, I was mm -hmm. stunned because I never thought that would happen. Because mm -hmm. they're very protective of it. Mm -hmm. But there are plenty of places. One of the things, I don't know if Mike talked about it this morning, so one of the things they're doing now, when these grow big enough, they'll take cement, they'll mix it up on the boat, they'll put it in the Tupperware, We'll go down on the reef, we'll clear a section on the rock, get all the algae and everything up, take the Tupperware, plop the cement down, and then we'll stick the plugs in the cement. And so we'll have a piece of cement with maybe 10 plugs in it. And within a couple of years, it's going to grow over itself. Okay. So that's some of the stuff that we're doing. And again, 
it's all out there. We can show it to you if you come out with us. We can show you the different mm -hmm. things that are out there. So Fantastic. that's what's happening. Thank you. So we have a real shot. I mean, there are a lot of people, there are a number of scientists, uh, other people who say what we're doing is not worth the effort. But if we don't do something, it's all going to die. So we have a, a chance. We know we can grow it now. There are coral banks. We're, we're storing species from all over the world so that we have species to be able to grow in the future. I think most divers are ecologically minded. Most would like to help the coral reefs, and so this is a way to give back. I've told my boss with all the diving I've done, if I don't do anything else, I don't care. This is my, my chance to give back to the ocean that's given me such a rewarding life. That's all. That is wonderful. Well, I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, it's really windy out here today. We got cars going every which way. But anyway, right behind me here, uh, we are down in Big Pine Key in the Florida Keys. And right behind me is Captain Hook's uh, Dive Center. I think it's the name of it, but it's Captain Hook's uh, Dive Center. And uh, if you're down here in the Florida Keys and you're in the lower keys down around Big Pine, uh, if you want to come by, they've got uh, two big snorkel boats here that go out to the reefs. They'll do dives. Um, I say snorkel boats, I guess they're, uh, I think they're big Corinthian catamarans. So I'll, I'll show you pictures of those here in just a minute, but they'll take you out to the different areas here in the Florida Keys to dive. They've also got another location up in Marathon, and they may even have more locations, I'm not sure. I think, um, I know for a fact that there is the one down here in Big Pine, and then there is one in Marathon as well. So if you're down here in the Keys and you want to go, on a dive or on a snorkel trip uh, give captain hooks a call they're the folks that are sponsoring today's thing with the coral restoration and uh, just a really really cool community event down here they can contact us they can call us at any of our three phone numbers they can book online if they see us booked online um, they can contact reef renewal to find out what we're doing so they can do any number of things but the easiest number to call us is at our number here which was 305 uh, 872 9863 and just say I'm interested in doing coral work mm -hmm. and we'll take it from there. Okay. That's the easiest way. Okay. Awesome. Very cool.